I think one of the things you'll come to appreciate if you haven't already about Unwon Photo Raw is the local adjustment capability. It really gives you a lot of power and control and allows you to really target your edits to specific parts of the photo, hence the word local. I'm going to talk about that in this video. This is a beginner's guide, kind of quick start, if you will, to the local adjustment tab in on One Photo Raw 2024. Let's get started. I've got a photo here and I'm on develop and I'm on develop for a reason. And that is because there's a new capability in this new version of On One that is called Brilliance AI. Now I've talked about that in previous videos. You might want to check out this playlist here, which is all my On One Photo Raw 2024 videos. But I cover Brilliance AI. But the reason I want to start there is uh, really twofold. The first one is Brilliance AI, by definition, is creating local adjustments for you. We're going to show you that. But also, I think it's a, uh, no pun intended, a brilliant place to start your edits. And I actually do believe you should start your edits on the Develop tab and then move to local. In fact, the way they've set up the different tabs in On One Photo Raw, I think is ideal. You go develop, you go local, then you go effects for landscapes, cityscapes, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Brilliance AI. And when I do that, it will automatically identify different sections or regions in the photo. It'll apply mass to them and it'll apply adjustments as well. Now I'm not going to dive into all the manipulations you can do in Brilliance AI because I want to get over on the local tab but it's really important that you're aware of this because this is in effect creating local adjustments for you. And it is a great starting point. So if you see the before and the after, all I did was click one button. I haven't done anything and my photo is already vastly improved. If you come down in here, you can see these different regions. It's identified flora, sky, and water. And in doing so, what it's done, remember flora, sky, and water, it's created a local adjustment for flora, sky, and water. That's why I wanted to start there because Brilliance AI is going to create that local adjustments for uh, local adjustment for you and essentially kickstart your editing. Now, I do recommend spending a little more time on develop. There's other things there that are super important. And in fact, I've got a quick start or beginner's guide to develop, which I recommend watching uh, before you really dive into local adjustments. But let's pretend everybody's seen all that and we've now got identified different sections of the photo with masks already created. Now, I want to point out masking is incredibly powerful in On One. There's lots of different masking types, and that's what local adjustments are. They are masked in, and that's why they're called local, because they're targeted or specific, which by definition means a mask has been created. Now, with all the different masking capabilities in On One, I can't cover all that in this video. That would be probably several other videos, which I will be doing. But um, I'm going to assume you have some basic idea of masking, but I will show you also how you can go and create one very simply. Uh, if you ever want to look at a mask, you can just click on that. And I've got my masking section, if you will, the properties window kind of anchored up here, which you can adjust in window, click on window and properties. And I have nest selected, which means it's nested over there. It, otherwise, it may be a floating window, which sometimes you have to move around. I've gone ahead and nested it. But if you ever want to see the mask, you can just open that up and click on this little goggle icon and that will show you the mask. So that's what's been identified as flora. Well, the truth is I don't really want that. I want to do something different. So I'm going to close the, uh, the mask view. And by the way, you can always click masking again to kind of collapse that menu. And over here, uh, my brilliance AI for flora adjustment, I've got three options. I've got this little gear icon and that's going to give me the different blending options. And you'll notice here, it's now been popped over to the blending section instead of masking. Blending modes, by the way, again, that's an entirely different thing. And that's why I like on one so much. There's so much you can do. And I think they've really organized it in a really logical way. But blending modes essentially tell whatever layer you're on how to blend itself with the layer below it. Not going to be really covered in this video, but I wanted to point out that that's what that gear icon is. The little semicircular arrow is, as, yeah, as you can see on hover, reset, and then the X is to just get rid of it. And that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to click to get rid of that. And I've now gotten rid of that local adjustment that was created by Brilliance AI. Now there was nothing wrong with that local adjustment. It did a fine job identifying it. I just wanted to do something different. And this is a good way to demo how you can set up your own local adjustments. So anytime you're ready to add one, you just click right here where it says add adjustment. I'll click on that and it will go ahead and open up the window for masking. 
Now, if you look down here, under the adjustment, there's a new section uh, called adjustment, which by the way, you can double click this and just change the name of it. I'm gonna call this buildings because I'm gonna create a mask just for that kind of castle area here in the photo. But now I'm on buildings. You can see I've got Brilliance AI, identified water and sky. We're gonna play with those in a minute. I've got buildings, but it's all black. So this is where masking comes into play. Um, if you aren't aware, there's a, an old expression about masking, which is black conceals, white reveals. Uh, what that means is anything that's in black in your masking view means the adjustment you make is not being applied there. It's being concealed or hidden or not impacted, right? Uh, white, on the other hand, reveals, which means anything that's in white in your masking menu is going to reveal that edit or that effect. So as an example, let me just close the masking and close that option. Let me open up water and you'll be able to see here when I get in and open up the masking and show you the mask, I'm on water, that's white revealing the edit has been applied in the water and black concealing it from the rest of the photo. So just keep in mind, that's a common expression, white reveals, black conceals. Now let me go back to the buildings, local adjustment that we created. And what I want to do is go in and create a mask. Now it's defaulting to exposure of negative one, and I don't want that. I want it to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to drop that uh, or in increase that to 0.15. You can always hit M to activate the masking menu. And you got a lot of different options here. And, and to be clear, I won't cover them all, but I'm going to click on masking brush and I'm going to use this little icon here, which is the perfect brush. It's just intelligent and uh, uh, very useful. Again, we'll have to cover these in future videos. Just be really careful whether you're on paint or erase. I, I want to be on paint, it defaulted to erase. So I clicked on paint and you can adjust your brush and your feather and all that kind of stuff. But what I wanna do is just kind of really quickly, just kind of paint over the buildings because I just wanna make some minor adjustments here just to kind of show you how it works. So I'm painting over it and what's happening is a mask is being created. And because I'm using this perfect brush, it's pretty intelligent around the edges, which is why I'm using it. So let's just say I've painted in and I'm happy with my mask, maybe something about like that. Now what you'll see is a mask is being created here in this window. And in fact, if I just click on those goggles, you can see what's happened. I've created a mask, white reveals, black conceals. So whatever I do is gonna be revealed in that section. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off so I can go back to what I wanna see. And I'm gonna close the masking menu because I'm really done masking. And I just wanna maybe increase that exposure a little bit now, just to give you a visual, you can see that's what's being impacted. Clearly, that's way too bright. I just wanted to brighten it a little bit, like maybe a 0 0.15, 0 0.2. And I can play a little bit with the contrast if I want. Uh, one of the nice things about local adjustments is it's essentially a replication of all the different edits uh, sliders that you have on develop. So you're basically taking develop again, but with masking, you can be targeted and, sp and specific. So like I'm doing here, I can make... First, my global edits, which is in the develop tab. And now on local, I come in with the mask and I use essentially the same sliders, but I can customize it to be applied to a certain area with the mask. And that's really what local adjustments are about. So maybe I wanna bump up the structure a little bit to give it a little bit more crunch. Maybe I wanna give it a tiny bit of warmth, maybe like a one or two. How about a one, just to bring up a little bit of the warmth there in the, the castle and maybe a tiny bit of vibrance, maybe a three or four something like that. All I'm doing is just kind of bumping up uh, a little bit of the look of that castle. I can always click here next to the word to open or close the local adjustment for whatever I'm hovered over. And these little radio buttons allow me to turn them on or off. So if you look at the buildings, the local adjustment we just created, I'm going to hit this radio button and turn it off. So I deactivated, uh, deactivated that. You can see that nothing is being applied. And now Upon clicking it again and reactivating it, you can see that my local adjustment has been applied there. So that's essentially how local adjustments work. And the importance of these is, of course, your ability to target specific areas and come in and customize the look of it. Now, the other cool thing is, of course, you remember on Develop with Brilliance AI, we've got sky and water. Remember, it also identified flora, but I deleted that. And instead, I came in and created my own custom uh, local adjustment for the buildings. But even though these were created automatically with Brilliance AI, I can still come in and refine them further. I can adjust the mask if I want to, or in this case, I wanna play a little bit with the adjustments that were applied automatically. So I'm gonna click on water, and I'm opening the local adjustment just for the water. 
right here you have a little visible uh, kind of a window that shows you kind of a, a preview of what the mask looks like so remember white reveals black conceals i'm in water it's named that automatically which is great so what i want to do in the water is maybe i want to make that a slight bit cooler so i'm gonna go a little bit left on temperature and maybe a little bit of saturation and vibrance just pumping up the color a little bit that's all i've done now i can click on sky and you'll see that these auto collapse right i've collapsed water i've now opened sky and i want to take that temperature slightly left as well and slightly bump up the vibrance and saturation just trying to create a little bit more saturated sunset here uh, maybe i'll actually go a tiny bit warmer just want to be careful because the sky and the water the water is of course reflecting what's going on in the sky i want to make sure that they're fairly similar you don't have to have the numbers be exact but you want them to be fairly similar so it doesn't look like it doesn't belong together because of course it does the point here of course is that i've gone in and customized the look of brilliance ai for the sky uh, which is a local adjustment that was automatically made for me now i'm going to close that and show you a couple of other things about local adjustments so i'm going to go ahead and click add adjustment and you've got a few different sections here uh, the first one is opacity which is basically how much of the effect is coming through it's going to default to 100 when you've uh, created one but you can adjust that so if you come in and make some adjustments uh, and mask them in and then decide well that's a little too much you can pull that back with the opacity slider you also get this section here called styles which is essentially a pre-built look that i could apply so i could click on vibrance or detail this drop down menu as you can see has a whole lot of other things and that gives you the ability to quickly just kind of do something to your photo and mask it in so it's essentially a pre-built look a little bit like a preset but just for that local adjustment so those two tools uh, combined are really useful i tend not to use styles simply because i tend to want to control what i'm doing myself but opacity i think comes in really handy and you can always click to collapse these uh, the tone section as we've already covered is essentially a replication of what's going on over here in develop but the cool thing is in addition to having structure and haze you've got noise so you can actually remove noise in targeted areas so if the sky was noisy for some reason i could come in and apply this noise reduction just to the sky with a local adjustment so that tone section is really powerful uh, i've covered structure color of course is going to give you that temperature tint saturation and vibrance which i've already kind of shown you and then the other thing that's really cool is paint with color which allows you to actually go in and apply a color to a specific area with a mask so that would allow you to maybe touch up skin or even replace the color of an object if you wanted to not something i need in this photo so i'm gonna go ahead and collapse that section and then collapsed all these sections you can kind of see what a local adjustment looks like by the way did you notice i created this one and it's below buildings well you can always just rearrange these you can just click and drag that above and now adjustment here what i've called adjustment and i'm going to call this something else that's sitting on top so you can move these in the stack if you want to and one other thing i like to do with local adjustments is actually not use it as a local adjustment so you can go into the mask and this little icon here in the masking is going to invert your mask so remember it defaults to black which is black conceals which means nothing will be shown and then what i normally do is paint in where i want it to be shown but you can also just invert that and make it white remember white reveals so the edit will be revealed across the entire photo and i'm going to do that here but you will notice that it went dark and that's because in this tone section that default is to a negative one so i've removed that put it back at zero and now i've got essentially what's going to be a global adjustment and this is something i like to do when i'm kind of customizing the look of my photo as i'm kind of finishing up local adjustments i sometimes like to come in and apply a local adjustment but without a mask and just apply it across the entire photo so it's kind of a global local adjustment in this case maybe i want to bump up the contrast a little bit maybe put on the highlights slightly maybe lift the midtones or shadows maybe i go into color and give it a little bit of extra bump in saturation or vibrance and then uh, now i'm kind of noticing maybe i want to pull these highlights down a little further and maybe pull those high, uh, midtones back down maybe add a little bit more contrast overall this is just a kind of a touch up to the light and color tones that i often like to do after i finish with develop and my customized or true local adjustments with masks i'll sometimes come in and just create this global local adjustment and just to make it easy I will double click there and i will call this global which i like to do you just hit enter when you're finished but then you can see what all your masks are because we've named them or in the case of brilliance ai they've been named for us 
And that just gives you a good idea of kind of what's going on in your photo and what you've done. So again, I can turn this off if I want to. That's what it looked like with my Brilliance AI plus my customized buildings local adjustment. And then I came back with a global local adjustment. So not really a local adjustment. It's applied everywhere, but I'm on the local adjustment tab. I'm just applying it across the entire photo. Just a little thing I like to do. Certainly not required, but I think it gives you the ability to slightly refine the look of your photo kind of before you go into effects and do some more customization. But if I turn this, that's off. If I turn it back on, you'll see it had a little bit more of an impact across the entire photo. Now, the cool thing is, of course, and we're not going to get into this in this video, but all of these masks you can copy and paste. So if I wanted to do something with these buildings, but use uh, one of their effects, I could copy this mask from this building section that I already created and then paste it and use it in an effect, for example, if I wanted to. So a lot of power and control with on one and with masking and with local adjustments. It all works together quite well and beautifully and I love it. And as you can see, I mean, pretty quickly, you can go from a photo that's needing edit and the light and the color and all that are kind of flat and with a couple of key things, some of which are done automatically, thanks to the power of Brilliance AI, you can come in and get a pretty nice looking result without a whole lot of effort and without having to really dive into too deep of a technical sort of uh, edit. Now I'll come back and do more uh, videos around different aspects and elements, including effects and masking and things like that. But I wanted to give you a kind of a quick start, kind of getting started guide to local adjustments. Super powerful. And like I said, if you haven't already been using them, uh, I'm sure that you will and you will come to appreciate them greatly like I do because I use them really on every photo. My workflow is really, I go to develop, I use Brilliance AI, I do more customization in develop, and then I go to local, do my customization there, and then I go to into effects and do customization there. And that's the power of on one. You have the ability with all these masking capabilities and different masking types to really be targeted and specific, which is how you get a great looking edit at the end. So that's it for this one, my friends. Hope it gives you a good idea of how local adjustments work. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. You guys take care and until next time. Adios.